hope you guys don't mind that I sit down and have a little talk with all of you. This is a heart to heart, but the heart to heart starts out a little different. I received this lovely box this week and I wanted to share with all of you. This came from a friend and a subscriber of mine and she was going through her home because she has to move. She's going to be moving from her home. And I'm, that's a little bit what this heart to heart has to do with. But she got me, she gave me these because she knew that I would love them and cherish them and use them. She also gave me glass little bottle like this. And these are the kind of things that you see a lot in my videos and I cherish them and I use them. And lots of times people watch my videos and they see things they have in their home and they don't really want them anymore and they don't know what to do with them, but they know I would cherish them and so they give them to me. And this is where my heart to heart comes in because this lovely person just lost her husband this year. And I have so much I wanna share about losing a loved one. And this is a hard video for me to make because I'm going to have to admit to a lot of things that are painful for me. But I think in doing so, we realize that we're not alone in life. And I told her that I'm going to be doing a heart to heart because she shared with me her heart about losing her spouse and how difficult that is. You know, I keep saying the loss of my parents and I keep thinking it was a year ago, but actually it's a year and a half ago. And time stands still when you're going through deep pain and sorrow. And I thought I was over it, over it. Well, we're never really over it, but I was doing really well. And then I had a little bit, well, for two weeks, things were really hard for me. And I only realized now the reason why I was triggered so badly. And I think I want to share with you a little bit about grief and about trauma of the grief of it all. Now, I didn't lose a spouse. I've never lost a child. I don't know what that trauma is, but everybody grieves differently and everybody goes through grief in a different manner. And losing both my parents in seven weeks time, it threw me into a spiral of just, it was an awful experience for me. And I'm at a loss of words to explain exactly what happened, but it threw me into a spiral of, it just was so difficult for me. It's difficult to say it because sometimes human words are hard to express how things can happen to you and how things can change you. And when my mother passed away, that wasn't so difficult for me because I knew that was going to happen. She was ill for many, 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 many years. But when my dad suddenly passed away, I wasn't able to cope with that. My coping skills weren't, weren't that well. Especially with being on YouTube every single day of your life, going through that, you just don't know how grief is going to affect you. You know, we never know. You never know how something is going to affect you until it happens. And for me, it became very detrimental. I, I became very detrimental to my, myself. I, I ate my emotions. I fed my emotions. You know, I latched on to anything negative about me. For some reason, when people were mean to me and people were posting things online about me that were unkind, that weren't true, that were evil, I focused on that and I don't know why but it was over the death of my parents and that made me vulnerable. Then my anxiety started getting really bad. Physically, I became very ill. I, a lot of things, of course I had emergency surgery. You know, all that, can that play a role in it? It probably can. What your mind and your heart fixate on will affect you, you know, physically, it will. And then you all know my journey. You know, I had that heart stopping moment where I thought I was going to die. <laughs> I really thought I was going to die. I look back on it and smile now, but it was awful time of my life because I simply found myself as a little girl again, and I found myself wanting to just go where mom and dad went. And that was really hard. It's really hard to talk about because I have so much to live for. I have a beautiful husband, a beautiful children, a beautiful life. But yet, when my parents died, the little girl in me wanted to go with them. 
because they were my parents. And I was at a point in my life where I felt like, I just felt like I didn't want to be here. I wanted to be with them. And then you go through all the emotions of losing a loved one. You go through, you go through the sadness, the utter grief of losing a loved one. Then you go through the loneliness of losing a loved one. Then you go through the anger. I was so angry. I was so angry that why? Why did the Lord take my parents away? I'm still young yet. I need my dad. You know, I need my mom. Why did they do why did he do this? You go through all of these emotions and everybody goes through a certain amount of these emotions. I think that women in general tend to feel a lot stronger than what men do in general. But you know, that's not all. You know, we all share our emotions differently. I've had a lot of subscribers lose loved ones at an alarming rate this year. Very alarming. It was extremely alarming to hear all of a sudden a subscriber of mine, my husband died, my wife died, my husband's ill, he died. Like it was just week after week after week. It was like another person died, another person, you know, didn't live. I, I just became so depressing. And then I had that moment in my life where God spoke to me. Now he didn't speak in an audible voice where it thundered from the heavens, but that's still small voice. And he said, Tessie, you're needed here. And then I realized that I have to live my life. Then I got into a point in my journey of grief where I was a kid again and everything I had as a child, I wanted. I wanted everything I had as a child. I relived my childhood. So if I seen something that was, I had as a child, I wanted it again, but that's what happened to me. I am childlike, I'm still childlike, even though I've matured through the years of YouTube, I'm still very much like a child. But I was in that stage where I had to hold on to anything that was mine as a child because I didn't want my childhood to leave. My parents were gone. I wanted that childhood part of me to stay. Then I went through a spell where everything my parents owned, I had to have. Everything. And I still am partly that way, but not as much as I used to be. You know, I'd hang, I hang on to my parents' things, and I still do. But I don't look at them now in the same aspect. You know, they bring me a lot of healing and they are a part of my life because I did put memories in tangible things. And I am so glad I have little things that was my dad's and little things that were my mom's because it gives me great, great happiness. And so grief is something that everyone experiences. Don't ever let somebody tell you how you need to grieve. I grieve differently than my siblings did. You know, my siblings, you know, they grie their grief was a lot different than mine. I'm adopted. I will have a certain amount of different kind of grief than what some people will because I'm adopted. Adopted children oftentimes are extremely, ex they are sensitive. And I am, I'm very sensitive. I was the baby in the family. So maybe my grieving is a little different. And so these are things that I have to work on. And these are things that are extremely extremely personal but unless i don't share i think if i share my story maybe it can help someone else they can understand what what i'm going through and what they went through and so she shared with me you know the struggle you know her husband's gone now now she she don't have the income that she had she can't live at the same home i don't know what that would be like and i pray that someday if that would happen to me that god would give me extra strength the smell of roses, you know, brings back so many memories of at being at home. My mother had a rose arbor and it was beautiful when I was a little girl and I used to always like to pick the roses. A family member bought my childhood home. Now before I finish this story, I want you to know that my childhood home, I loved it dearly, but I never would want to live in it. And so many people over the time when I was showing the home and 
and saying goodbye to it, they said, oh, I can't believe that you're not moving there. That's not a home for me. The home is in the middle of lots of houses. You know, there, I couldn't homestead. I couldn't have chickens. I couldn't live the kind of lifestyle that's given me so much peace there. And I don't think emotionally it would have been good for me to live in that home because I would have been constantly, constantly in the shadows of their death. Now that's just me personally. I wouldn't want it to live where I see my parents' home on a daily basis because it would bring so much pain to me. But a family member bought the home and I'm so thankful they did, but I can't go to that home yet. <laughs> and it's been a very difficult thing for me to explain because people who don't grieve in a grief like I do, maybe won't understand it, but some of you maybe would understand it. I've been invited to my childhood home i just not ready yet. I'm not ready to go there. I'm not ready to face it all. I just, I'm not ready. You know, it's hard to explain, but we as humans, we know when we're ready. And I'm not ready for anything ext extreme in my life, extreme changes, because I need a year. And I told my husband, I said, I just need a year. I need a year of nothing. I need a year of nothingness. Just calmness and peace and and nothing nothing different you know I needed that year to heal I have a birth father who wants desperately to meet me again it's been years since I've seen him and I knew in my emotions after the loss of my parents that I wasn't ready to meet my birth father yet again I wasn't ready for that and and I gave myself that time to heal and I realized that I gave myself the best gift that I could ever give. And that is acceptance and giving myself the time to heal. I didn't do that in the past. When my in-laws passed away, it was very traumatic to me because they were my closest friends. And I just had a lot of turmoil in my life over that time of a lot of changes. We moved, we did all of this and that. You know, we were selling things and moving and I realized that that caused me a lot of stress that I didn't realize was playing havoc on my body. I cried for many years at night thinking about what's gonna happen when my parents die because my parents were my world. Even though I lived through a lot of post-traumatic stress, I had a lot of childhood stress in my life. I won't go into detail about that. I did a video on that many years ago but I suffered many years of PTSD and God has healed me of that. And the relationship of my parents is I love them unconditionally, but I had a childhood that was full of a lot of hurts, deep hurts. And through the years of being on YouTube, I have really learned to come to the point of having peace in my life and forgiveness. I'm not the kind of person that holds grudges. Even to the people who write the meanest things about me, I have no grudges against them. They sadden me because their hearts are so full of just deep-seated resentment in their life. And that really saddens me because life is so short and we only have one life to live. And what we do on this earth, we will be accountable for in heaven someday. And it saddens me when I see people that live such distraught lives that they want to attack others. It's just a very hard thing for me to understand because I could never do that to somebody else. Never. And so through all of that and through all the pain and grief that I've gone through, the Lord has been there number one in my life. No, it hasn't been easy. My road has been very hard. It's been a struggle. It's been a big struggle, but God has always been there for me. Not in the ways I thought he would be, but he's always been there for me. And without him, it wouldn't be, life wouldn't be worth living. And without the Lord, I would be nothing. I would have no testimony. I would have no story. I would have nothing to share. But grief is something that affects everyone different. And I think in life, when you are grieving, people will try to tear you down. People will try to kick you when you're down. People will come out of the woodwork and be cruel and mean to you. 
People won't understand you when you're in the grieving process. Some people won't understand. They'll say like, oh, you're just, you're just drama or, or they won't understand, oh, just get over it. You know, it happens to all of us. Don't let those kind of people hurt your feelings. Don't let those kind of people get into your spirit. Realize that those kind of people may be dealing with life issues just in a very negative way. And that's very hard and very sad. I wanted to reach out to the world. I wanted the world to reach out to me. I wanted everyone to find happiness and love. And I wanted everyone to know the Lord like I know him. That was the biggest hardship of my life was here on YouTube when I tried to share friendship and kindness with people and they just turned a blind eye to me and they just stuck their nose in the air and said, Ooh, I don't want what she's got. That was hard for me. But I realized now at age 52, I'm not going to reach everyone and everyone's not going to come and reach out to me. And that's okay because I realize now that I have been protective of myself and that I'm realizing in life that I don't owe anybody anything, but I owe myself everything. I owe myself the graciousness, the kindness, and I owe the people that are kind and loving and want friendship. I owe them the kind of respect and love in return. And so if you're grieving today, it don't matter if it's a year, five years or 10 years, you grieve how you grieve. Nobody can tell you how long or how short you can grieve. And though I do have some tears when I think of my mom and my dad, and I do have some times where life is a little hard, I started having some anxiety again. I didn't understand all this until I realized one night in bed that it was the death of my chickens that spurred on just a little trauma in my life about losing my loved ones and I'm a highly sensitive person that's okay it's okay to be highly sensitive there's nothing wrong with that you keep moving on you embrace your differentness you embrace who you are and don't let anyone tell you that it's not right in how you are you can be who you can be nobody can tell you anything different and so when I lost my chickens somehow chemically that kind of affected me and with the loss of my parents and I just felt kind of depressed for two weeks and I I realize now why and I just realized you know what it's okay I just was easier on myself those two weeks realized not to stress things with my work and with my business and I'm feeling back to being me again one day at a time sweet Jesus for tomorrow will never be mine. So for today, teach me the way, one day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, for tomorrow may never be mine. So for today, teach me to pray, one day at a time.